of the rhythm for you, man. Listen, man, I don't need to play in this video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are talking about you and your fancy guitar over there. He's not even here is how it is for me right now. <laughs> you want to say hi or should I say hi? I'm Brett, and then I'm I'm not gonna say a whole lot. I'm just gonna like tease him and make him say stuff that he doesn't want to say. I'm John, A.K.A. Smelly Telly. Nice to see you all again. And here today, we're here to talk about some strats, right? The strat. This Supposedly. one is insignificant. I got gotcha. you. Actually, it's very significant. It's, it's elite. This one's. You know, I didn't even think about it, but like. It's, Everybody, this is discontinued and it's really cheap on our website, but that's true. let's get back to this guy. Okay. So what is this? It's a Strat. It's the Eric Johnson uh, 54 Virginia. It's modeled after his one of his like most prized and cherished Strats. And um, I mean, it is a Strat, but it's got a couple of, as Larry would say, Eric Johnson quirks on them. And uh, we'll kind of talk about each one of the little things on it. So, I mean, bottom line, it's a Strat. It sounds like a Strat. Um, it plays really good. It's, uh, you know, we'll go through some of the features. Uh, maple neck, sassafras body, which is kind of weird. Um, this is the first time I've ever, as far as I know, played a sassafras body. And um, apparently, I guess Leo got like a bunch of it in 54 and they made some tellies and Strats with them. And uh, Eric didn't even know until um, he had sold his and couldn't find one that sounded right and his tech told him well it's because the one you had was made out of sassafras so sassafras body quarter song uh, maple neck medium jumbo frets and the other thing that's kind of unique about it is the 12 inch radius so it's really flat it's a very easy to guitar to play on uh, the pickups we'll run through those just real fast so these two are the i think the 5762 uh, pickups, uh, strat pickups, and then down here, this is the DiMarzio uh, HS2. I was expecting this to be louder because it's a humbucker, but Larry said, well, it's running in single coil mode though. So, so it's not an overpowering pickup. I will say, uh, I this is probably my favorite uh, strat bridge humbucker or pickup that I've probably ever heard. You I've, say that to all the girls. I don't, you know, uh, I, and I need to let everyone know, number one, I'm not really a Strat guy. I love them and I love the way they sound, but I'm more of a telly dude. And number two, I can't play like Eric Johnson, so they got the perfect man for the job. Yeah, we, we, we searched long and hard for this guy. <laughs> they went outside, closed their eyes, and threw a rock. And uh, that I was the one who got hit with the rock. So uh, let's go over the controls real quick. We'll do a little bit of playing here in a little bit too, but since we're talking about everything. Um, I've never known you to want to talk. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I am known for my talkiness. <laughs> so um, the tone control down here is only wired to the bridge pickup, and the tone control here is only wired to the neck pickup. So in the middle position, you can, you know, it's like, you know, nothing. It's like Uncle Eddie with the metal plate in his head. Neither tone controls do anything. And, and how frustrating has it been to not have a tone control on almost every strat for almost ever on the bridge pickup? There's well, so many strats out there that don't have a tone control on that bridge pickup. So Brett was sleeping during the part where I said I'm not really a strat guy, but <laughs> so uh, I'm going to take his word for it that it's annoying. Yeah. It's, okay. Because it's because that pickup is so you know it sounds thin already, mm -hmm. being where it is, and then they just you know it's been on almost on a lot of models. I'm not going to say all of them, but on a lot of models until this year that hasn't been adjustable on a lot of models not all of them but yeah. now it's this one right on that yeah. it's mm -hmm. the bottom one yeah so now you can kind of take some of that harshness out yeah. of it and it, it, it really helps it does and it it's not drastic either so it's not like <laughs> on certain other brand of guitars where if you just barely touch it it's like where did it go That's great sounding. It I mean, yep. It's not shrill at all. And I did watch the Eric Johnson Fender video about this, and he said that's exactly why he did it, you know, so that he could roll back, kind of balance out the highs and everything with the other two pickups. So good move on his part or his tech or whoever did it. Uh, position two is position two. 
which is what? Won't go any farther than that so we don't get copyright stricken. It's an 11 note minimum, that, maximum. Is that right? I don't know so, what it is. So yeah, we'll position two, if you're new to strats, I do know this much about them, are these two pickups here, right? And it gives a uh, middle pickup, just middle. Neck pickup is neck. Do we want to talk about position four? You don't know about position four, do you? I want you to. Talk okay. About it. All right. I know more than you think I do. I <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. So when I was just playing through it, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? So that's position four. So there was some discussion ahead of time about we're not for sure if there's something wrong with it or not. So <laughs> it turns out, no, it's on purpose. It's wired out of phase. So it does have that kind of, I just did a video where I talked about this on Friday about out of phase sounding like a goose or like your wife when she's frustrated with you. I don't Ooh. know if it's like your, my, my, yes. <laughs> just make sure your wife never watches these videos. My, if it has anything to do with me, she's not much. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks we're all ridiculous. So. Oh, well, she's <laughs> yes. right. Yes. So um, the way he kind of described it in the video was it kind of gets this certain bell like. So Peter Green, the name Peter Green was thrown out there. Let's just be honest, though. Peter Green played, you know, a Les Paul. It was out of phase. So it's not going to sound just like Peter Green. And for about 10 minutes, I was like, this is unusable until I kicked on some gain and then some, uh, like a, a fuzz face type of fuzz. And then come up here. Do you hear that? Starting to get there. Yeah. So Larry and I now are in love with position four. Um, I'll even throw in some more because it sounds even better. That is cool sounding, is man. Cool, man. But definitely better on the higher notes. There's that, like I was telling Larry, it almost sounds like you're doing a pinch harmonic. Pretty nifty. Yeah. Well, let's hear number five. All right, number five. Hold on, it's coming. Number five is alive. Mm -hmm. No one, will, you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Yes, I do. Short robot, short, short circuit. circuit. Yeah, of course I do. I always thought Wally looked like the robot number five. Yeah. So there's the neck, which is that's the magic. Yeah, that's my favorite. I mean, if you're gonna play a strat, it's almost like why have the other two? <laughs> If I could just put that in a telly. That's All right. Sweet. That is a sweet spot. It is. So uh, one other thing that we'll talk about, and then maybe we can kind of do some guitar swapping and some Ooh. tone compare. Uh, down here, you have the uh, saddle down here, and you'll notice these are all vintage, 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 and then you get to this one, which is more of a modern, I think it's a graph tech. Uh, he did that on purpose because he found that a lot of times on his Virginia, the higher notes on the E string would sound a little shrill, and this kind of mellowed it out a little bit, so um, we don't, there's not really a way for us to know that, except for taking, one, taking it off and putting the vintage on there and then swapping them back and forth, and I'm pretty sure it's not worth that kind of time yeah. investment, so. Well, and the, the thing you have to do whenever you do that, and if you notice, well, it's not as obvious on this one, but whenever you do that and it mellows it out, you have to adjust pickups and pole pieces and stuff, because once you mellow the string out, it kills a little bit of the output, 
So it's it's a stuff it's stuff a luthier should do. I right. guess I'm just saying. Yeah, I think don't I, go take your Squire yeah. <laughs> Strat and put a new saddle on it, thinking it's going to change the tone, and then all of a sudden you're not going to hear that string, and you're going to have to dig into it. Well, you got to adjust the pickups and and things like that, and the height. Of it. There's a lot. There's more to it than just throwing a new saddle on it and looking like Eric Johnson and sounding like him. That's which right. very few people can. Well, apparently Larry can. Larry can. And, but he's hiding behind the camera. Yes. So, Okay, I think that's pretty much most of the features. You know, I mean, if you're wanting to know about pricing and all that, just uh, click on the info below at moreguitars.com or you can call down here. Today I saw, today I saw Corey first. So if you come down or call down here, ask for Corey. He's the special, very special uh sales representative today so i'd like to give them all a shout out but it's just whoever i see first and corey was first today so early bird gets the worm that's right so the there's something i was going to say let me see the guitar oh, again to the, remind me the finish on the the finish is nitro also just like they did in the 50s the, what i was going to say too and this is another thing about setup is like whenever you see an artist's guitar like eric johnson it's a big deal. The setup is a big deal. Like you can look at this guitar and there are things, like it looks like a guitar, blah, blah, blah. But it's got that saddle, the pickup, certain pickups are turned this way more than the others. And it's all, I mean, to get that perfect sound. I mean, they say Eric Johnson can hear <laughs> the percentage of his nine volt batteries in his pedals. And he can say that one's at like 75% or fit. I doubt he can be like 67, but he can probably say <laughs> that one's about 75%. And he, I don't know if this is right. And Eric, you can come and beat me up someday if you're ever in the Evansville area or whatever. But like some people say like he kind of pre-drains his batteries before shows to get them to I've, a certain level yeah. where there's sag, you know? Sure. Yeah, I've, so, heard, I've heard that from other people too, yeah. though, not just him, that there's a certain certain kind of quality especially with vintage style fuzzes people like i have a vintage style fuzz and it's a pain in the butt because you have to use you don't have to but they they say try not to use an alkaline yeah. but i found if anyone's looking go down to um it's the dollar it's not it's dollar is it dollar tree maybe not it's not the dollar general but spend some more time thinking about where it is i will <laughs> but I found them like you can get like 800 of them for like a dollar. So they're super cheap. So I've got a bunch. I'm going to buy them all and then I'm going to be the only source and everyone's yeah. going to hey man. I'll be like, no, sorry. Cannot so, spare a square. If you've ever tried to play, like I'm, I'm kind of harping on the setup thing because there's a lot to it. I mean, uh, with a, with, that's why these guys have techs mm -hmm. because they, before they even touch the guitar, it's, completely altered mm -hmm. and like you like if you've ever seen the way Stevie Ray Vaughan's guitar is set up <laughs> you'll understand why certain certain things pop out more than others and the way he can be heavy-handed on the low strings because of the way he sets mm -hmm. it up it's a big deal you think it's all in the amp and the pedal it's really all in the playing but when you can ad adapt the guitar setup to your playing then you've got it made that's true it takes and, time, and it is like I said. There, there is a difference. The the twelve inch radius is a, is makes a huge, huge difference. Um, I'm struggling with the seven point two five on another guitar of mine as we speak. So, what else you want to do? Give with us this? a big bend on like fifteen on the B string. Just hold it. Go way like a step up and hold it. Sometimes on the on the higher radius guitars that are fret or that are flatter it can fret out you know yeah, if it's not true. set up right so i just want everybody to hear that yeah you know these guitars in the past the older eric johnson's they were coming in and we'd have to do some neck adjustments and stuff on them but this one all the ones we've gotten to this are are this is a different guitar if you've had good if you felt like the old thin line was good of of eric's this is better and if you've not liked that one in the past you should listen to this one because i personally don't enjoy playing the older thin line 
This one I do. Yeah. It's a different guitar. It, it is. I noticed that too. I mean, even the neck profile feels different and it's described as a soft V. Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much on. It's definitely got a little bit more pronounced kind of, you know, kind of middle hump back here than a C. So it's pretty comfortable. It's a comfortable neck. Um, it comes, the action's a little bit higher than probably I would have it, um, just because that's what I'm used to. But yeah, it's a great playing guitar. Um, and I appreciate you guys giving it to me. That's really cool. Isn't that, isn't that weird? So <clears throat> why don't we run all the pickup and pickup configurations through a couple of different gain settings? Can um, I video this so I can watch it later? Sure. So uh, I've got a Volante delay going. Um, it is a fantastic pedal, even though it wasn't for Brett, it was for me. So they've got one down here, I'm pretty sure. And a reverb pedal, and then I'm just gonna kick on like a, a drive, so. Tell them what it is. I have to. You don't want to? I will, but. Just spit it out real it's, quick. It's, you're, and then he's gonna call me a cork sniffer. So <laughs> yeah, it's a, king, it's a king of tone. I have a king of tone. I lucked into having one. I did not have to pay more than what it costs, so. Uh, and so that's what I'm kicking on right now, is my king of tone. That's with the tone all the way up. All right, so it's a little bit unusable right there. Position two. I like position two. Position five and position two on most strats, or I like those. Middle. Weird position for which we already talked about. One thing you could do might be kind of fun is you could like do a little echo. So, you know, and then neck pickup tones all the way up on the neck pickup. You can roll it back. I don't know why you'd want to. We'll throw on some fuzz face style fuzz, which it's a little muddy. Turn that, try to turn the king of tone off real quick. Sure. Really, that pedal stacks better. That type of fuzz for me goes really good with like a light overdrive. <laughs> Loud, my other one is it's moist. <laughs> so we'll come back down. What I was playing around with earlier was on the bridge pickup, and I know I've lost some of my volume. And then kicking on actually the treble booster, which I thought on a bridge pickup on a strat would just be like, I was getting ready to cover my ears, but it actually sounds phenomenal. And wow. that's, that's with the tone all the way up. If I roll it back a little bit. the guitar turned down right now no okay i can make it louder if you want yes okay always stand back larry <laughs> It sounds phenomenal in the room, and it's it not, does. it's not because I'm playing it, it's just, it sounds great. I never ever would have thought that a bridge pickup on a Strat would be able to take that much gain and treble boost and all that, but it sounds phenomenal. Well, explain, explain what this thing is, that pickup. So it is the DiMarzio HS2, which is a humbucker, but only using the top coil. I got it right. <laughs> I got it right. So my guess is that that's so that it retains a single coil sound 
without all of the kind of harsh harshness of a humbucker there i don't know you know what i think you get the benefit of the cancellation yeah maybe it's that it melts right? it mel mellows it out i think it's a what stacked was... pickup right mm -hmm. it is yeah. Yeah. so it's flipped so that's where you get your noise cancellation but yeah. you're only using the top coil it's kind of genius I, that's really what it is yeah i it's I'm actually, kind of making that up it's a, it's not the first time i've heard that there's another guy that um that i used to kind of watch on YouTube, he said the same thing. That's what he had in his, because he's a big Eric Johnson fan. So, mm -hmm. um, but I hadn't really thought about it in years until this guitar. So it does, it sounds great. It's probably the best sounding single coil, you know, pickup I've ever heard in a Strat. And this year is the, for the American professional and everything mm -hmm. that's coming out American wise, mm -hmm. they're putting very usable pickups in the bridge where that's been a little bit of a struggle in the past for a single coil. Cool. But it's, it's, they're coming, they're doing a lot of good things. Well, I'm sure we'll be demoing some of them too. So who knows? Maybe yep. this is 2020. Maybe that's the year I become a Strat guy. I've owned a bunch. It's just, they're almost too comfortable, you know, mm. they're like, I know it's terrible. <laughs> well, let's so, wrap this thing up. Okay. Then what do you want to do? I have no idea. <laughs> I want some coffee is what I want. We can handle that. Yes. We'll get some coffee. You play and I'll go get your coffee. You want to, you want to hear like an Eric Johnson imitation? Sure. All right. This will be short and terrible. <laughs> That's all I got. That's great. Yeah. Better than I can do. <laughs> we really need to bring Larry in for the, the last part of the video so he can Larry. show us how to do it. Take us out on pickup five, on setting five. Hi, I'm, on, I'm there. And uh, take a little bit of the gain off. Noodle, noodle us out. Okay. stuck with us. <laughs> this is John. Smelly Telly. Smelly Telly. Smelly Telly. On Twitters and Some, Reverb. My gaming, or whatever. all the gaming I do. Everything he does is <laughs> Smelly Telly. Yes. And we are at moreguitars.com. Check out our, our, subscribe to the YouTube channel, go to our Facebook page, but most importantly, go to our website, sign up for our newsletter because you're going to get news and you're going to get new products before anybody else understands. Sneak peeks, okay? So uh, anyway, do that, then come back here and watch some more videos of us. Only us. <laughs> Moreguitars.com. Thanks, John. You're welcome. Do the poop. Bye.